Now let's look at Hebrews 10. This will also show us something more about the falling away. Hebrews 10, starting at verse 26, says this, For if we sin willfully after that we have received the knowledge of the truth, there remaineth no more sacrifice for sins, but a certain fearful looking for of judgment and fiery indignation, which shall devour the adversaries. He that despised Moses' law die without mercy under two or three witnesses. Of how much sore punishment suppose he shall he be thought worthy, who hath trodden under foot the Son of God, and hath counted the blood of the covenant, wherewith he was sanctified an unholy thing, and hath done despite unto the Spirit of grace. For we know him that hath said, Vengeance belongeth unto me, I will recompense, saith the Lord, and again the Lord shall judge his people. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Notice verse 29. Of how much sore punishment suppose he shall he be thought worthy, who hath trodden underfoot the Son of God, and hath counted the blood of the covenant, wherewith he was sanctified, an unholy thing, and hath done despite in the Spirit of grace. So this man, or this person who has done dishonor to God, who's trampled underfoot the blood of Jesus, was sanctified by the blood of Jesus. He was set apart by the blood of Jesus. So this man who was sanctified and saved and set apart by the blood of Jesus. He was made holy by the blood of Jesus because that's what sanctified means. He trampled underfoot the Son of God and he counted the blood that was shed for him to be an unholy thing. So this is a very serious thing and God does not take this lightly. What happens is, as we've seen in Hebrews 3 is the person goes after the sin they keep going after the sin, and as they're going after the sin, they're resisting God, they're hardening their heart, and eventually they come to a point where they're not going to repent, no matter what God does, or no matter how God calls out to them. And by doing so, they have counted God's blood, the blood of Jesus Christ, as an unholy thing, and they've done despite, or they've had spite toward the Spirit of God's grace. Because grace is not something that gives us the ability to sin and go along and continue in sin. Grace actually is meant to give us the ability to get out of sin and to walk in righteousness before God. It is not something that gives you a license to sin. The devil would want us to have a license to sin, but that is not an any license of life. It's a license to do what would bring damnation. He's a liar and he's a deceiver, so we must not listen to him. Now we'll look at another verse. Now Ezekiel 33:13 gives a very strong case that if you turn away from God, he cannot bring you into heaven, even if you were saved. Ezekiel 33:13 says, When I shall say to the righteous that he shall surely live, if he trust to his own righteousness and commit iniquity, all his righteousnesses shall not be remembered. But for his iniquity that he hath committed, he shall die for it. Again, when I say unto the wicked, Thou shalt surely die, if he turn from his sin and do that which is lawful and right, that's verse 14, it goes on to verse, I'm skipping verse 15. None of his sins that he hath committed shall be mentioned unto him. He hath done that which is lawful and right, he shall surely live. So, so God is clearly saying that if you forsake sin, you will be forgiven. If you trust in Jesus and you forsake sin, you're forgiven. But if you resist God and go after sin, he will call out to you. But if you keep doing it, he cannot forgive you if you harden your heart and refuse to repent. In other words, if you do repent from sin, then your heart isn't hardened, if you genuinely mean it. Let's continue Richmond Jima's testimony of what he saw in heaven and hell. When Richmond asked the angel guide why the pastors were in hell, the angel told him that the pastors were in hell because they did not rely on the power of the Holy Spirit the power of God when they were doing their ministry on earth. They instead were relying on occultic powers for their church and for their ministry. They were not genuine pastors and they did not use the power of God. They were using occultic powers in their ministry. Now the angel was referring to a certain group of pastors which God and had gone after false things which had turned aside after miracle working power which did not come from the Holy Spirit. God does miracle working power. He does do mighty miracles and signs and wonders. He does heal the sick, but if pastors harden their hearts and refuse God and turn away, then if they are demonstrating miracles, it will not be the power of the Holy Ghost in them if they don't know God's name. It will be the power of an evil spirit. And there are Indian gurus that have the power to release healing of the sick people, but there's bondage involved with those healings. It's not the type of healing that Christ does. And also lepers are not cleansed or healed by these men. So there's a difference between demonic healings and healings that come from God's Spirit. 
Richmond said that he saw the pastors screaming and crying out in hell, and he saw a great deal of pastors in hell. So that was a very sobering thing that Richmond just observed. Richmond went on to describe four different groups of pastors he saw in hell and what their exact sins were that brought them there. The angel Lord explained to Richmond why the pastors were in hell. There were several different groups of pastors. The first group he saw was comprised of pastors who had slept with women from their churches. They had fornicated and committed adultery with women from their churches, and when they died, they found themselves in hell. Their screams and cries filled Richmond's ears. And I also believe that this applies to looking at things online that would not please God. So now the second group was made of pastors who did miracles, signs, and wonders. This was not the power of the Holy Spirit, but occultic power is a power of demons. And they had chosen the power of the devil instead of the power of God to do these so-called miracles. They had sold their souls to the devil and had turned away from God. And the third group was composed of pastors who were murderers. They were in hell because they had killed people shedding innocent blood. And I also believe that according to what Jesus said in Matthew 5, if you hate someone and you hold a grudge against them, you cannot be forgiven. And that's also, if you look in Matthew 18, like we said, or in Matthew chapter 6. In Matthew chapter 6, verses 14 and 15, Jesus said, For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. That was in Matthew chapter 6, 14 and 15. In Matthew chapter 5, Jesus said, in verse 21, Ye have heard that it was said by them of old time, Thou shalt not kill, and whosoever shall kill shall be in danger of the judgment. But I say unto you that whosoever is angry with his brother without a cause shall be in danger of the judgment. And whosoever shall say to his brother Raka shall be in danger of the council. But whosoever shall say thou fool shall be in danger of hell fire. So Jesus is clearly teaching that if you are angry without a cause, you are in danger of judgment. So the third group of pastors was composed of men who were murderers in their hearts. And I believe that they were also there because of bitterness, unforgiveness, and hatred. And also they were there because they had shed innocent blood. Now the fourth group of pastors loved money. Richmond said that God did not call them into the ministry. He said they did not know God and that they were in the ministry to make money. And they were using the name of the Lord Jesus for material gain. They were lovers of money, Richmond said. Because money was their God, they were in hell. Now Jesus spoke about this in Matthew chapter 6, verse 24. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. That's Matthew 6.24. He said the same thing in Luke 16.13. Richmond said that he was very sad when the angel showed him all these pastors in hell. The angel and Richmond then went on, and as they went further, Richmond saw what he compared to a sea or an ocean of fire was like a large sea or some sort of large body of water but it was all composed of fire it covered the people according to Richmond and he said that he could hear screaming and crying he began to feel some of the heat it was very hot in that place Richmond said he told the angel of the Lord that he wanted to get back because he could not stand the heat any more. the angel then took him by the hand and they ascended back up the same way they had come. They arrived at the place where the elders were worshiping Jesus Christ. That's the 24 elders who were worshiping Jesus around the throne. There Richmond heard a loud voice saying, The time is set, the time is set, the time is set. Then another voice said, The blood, the blood, the blood. The angel of the Lord now took him to a window, and behind the window was an altar with blood on it an altar of sacrifice, and he saw blood all over that altar of sacrifice. Richmond understood that God would have to come back to the earth to destroy the earth because people had continued on in their sins, were not repenting, and were not giving their lives to Jesus Christ, and they were refusing to worship God as he called out to them. They were thinking that everything in heaven and in God's kingdom is a fairy tale, and they were living their lives any way that they wanted to. Richmond said that the only reason that God was not going to judge the earth just yet is that the blood of Jesus was still pleading and pleading from the souls of mankind. That's in essence what Richmond was saying. Richmond understood that God 
had a time set for when he would come to take the bride, and that the blood of Jesus Christ was still pleading for mankind. And Richmond understood that if God were to come now to the earth, there would be a lot of people who would not be ready. People are not repenting and are not turning to God, and people are not living for God, or worshiping him in spirit and truth is what Richmond was saying. Richmond said that the only reason God had not come for his bride and had judged the, and destroyed the world is that the blood of Jesus was still pleading for the lost. And the angel told Richmond that God was giving him a second chance. Richmond was to tell the people what he had seen and what he had heard. He was to tell people that the time is up, the time is up, and that heaven is real, and Jesus Christ is alive, and the blood of Jesus Christ is still speaking. You've just heard part three of Richmond Jima's testimony of heaven and hell. The next part we will see him going back to planet Earth. Thank you for listening to this. If you are interested in hearing about salvation through Jesus Christ, please click on the link about salvation below. Thank you for listening to this third part. Go to the next part, which is part four, if you are interested in hearing what happens next.